Come with me to Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 3. Genesis chapter 12, verse 1 to 3. Genesis 12, 1 to 3. Mr. Akumia, it's been a very long time. Good to see you. Okay. Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show you. And I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. Somebody say, I'm ordained to be a blessing. I'm to be a blessing. Say, I'm ordained to be a blessing. I'm to be a blessing. Shout, I'm ordained to be a blessing. blessing. Alright, so that's what scripture says. It said, I will make of thee a great nation. Now look at Genesis 24 verse 1. Genesis 24 verse 1. And Abraham was old well stricken in age, and the Lord had blessed him in, or say it, in, in all things. May you be blessed in all things. May you be old in age, and may you be blessed in all things. Okay. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 7 to 9. Galatians 7 verse, chapter 3 verse 7 to 9. Let's read it together. One go. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. Note that. That's very, very important. I realize that people want us to talk about everything in church except money. Praise the Lord. Everything. They want us to talk about everything in church except money. And most of the time, these people are like that because they are largely ignorant. Praise the Lord. They are likely ignorant and they don't know the centrality of the gospel of Christ. God's word talks about money. I talk about money because God talks about money. Somebody say, God, talk about, God talks about money. God talks about money a lot in scripture. There is more said about money in scripture than heaven and hell. There's more said about money in even the New Testament than it was said about love. Though love is the greatest. Praise the Lord. Yeah. If you look at the subject of love, it is only in First Corinthians chapter 13 that the whole chapter was devoted to it. But the subject of money was treated in two chapters. Second Corinthians chapter 8, verse chapter and chapter 9. Those two chapters combined together will give you about 39 verses in the New Testament and address money. Jesus spoke a number of parables. Most of his parables about 60 to 70 percent of his parables have to do with money praise the lord and that is because what we do with our money is a reflection of what our values are praise the lord and it's important that we understand the subject in the light of god's word i know that the subject of prosperity has been abused largely abused by a lot of people and so for some people they they have developed an aversion to the subject but you see, anything you don't hear about, you will not have faith for it. The Bible said, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And the just shall live by faith. So when you are not properly taught in God's word, as far as God's will is concerned, you will continually walk in sickness and disease and accept it as normal because you have not heard enough about healing. Praise the Lord. But if you study God's word, the blood that saved you and made you a child of God is the same blood that was shed to redeem you from sicknesses and diseases. Are you here with me? And so, you see, you can't, most people want to pick and choose. Turn to your neighbor and say, don't pick and choose. Salvation is a full package. Yeah. The Bible said we are persuaded of better things concerning you. Things that accompany salvation. There are things that accompany salvation. And when you pick and choose, you only end up seeing that you have really, really denied yourself. I know that there are really a lot of extremes when it comes to the subject of prosperity. But I would like to stay in the context of the New Testament and give you a proper perspective. Because all of us are interested in money. Praise the Lord. All of us use money. All of us relate with money in one way or the other. This morning before I came, the Holy Ghost showed me three dangerous ways to relate with money. And maybe I'll share them with you in the course of the month. Praise the Lord. There are some of you who may be here, that, that, those are the three ways you relate with money. 
And it's a very dangerous way to relate with money. Praise the Lord. Money is a very, very good servant, but a very bad master. Praise the Lord. And you cannot take dominion and use money right unless you get to know God's mind concerning it. So the subject is financial prosperity is God's will for you. Somebody say the financial prosperity is God's will for me. Financial prosperity is God's will for me. One day Jesus was speaking and they came to him. They said, uh, shall I put away my wife for any reason? That's what they came to according to the law of Moses. And Jesus told them in the beginning it was not so. And it means that any subject we want to deal with, every time we want to go and look at what it was like in the beginning. Praise the Lord. If you want to look at marriage, what was it like in the beginning? Can I marry three wives? Can I marry five wives? What was it like in the beginning? Praise the Lord. In the beginning, God did not give Adam, Evelyn, uh, Linda, and Akosuya. He gave Adam Eve. Praise the Lord. So when you come into the New the Old Testament and at some point you see Solomon changing wives, you don't use it as a standard and preach from the pulpit as if you have a right to marry as many as possible. Am I communicating here? Christ has one bride. He doesn't have many brides. His bride is a church. Praise the Lord. So we always need to go back to the beginning. What was it like in the beginning? What did God say from the beginning? You see, you are not a Christian who thinks like the, the world. You are a Christian because you think in line with God's word. Somebody say, I'm a Christian because I think in line with God's word. You see, there are a lot of believers whose spirits are saved, but their minds are unchanged. And as long as your spirit is saved, but your mind is not changed or transformed in the line of God's word, you are likely to sponsor and push Satan's agenda. You can be saved, but all your life, Paul was talking about it. He said, some of you are enemies of the cross. Your God is your belly. You push Satan, you promote Satan's agenda much more than you do that of Christ. And it's because you are not growing. You see, and if you don't grow in life, you always end up as a liability. Whether it's to the kingdom of God, to yourself, or to your family. Anybody who refuses to grow will end up as a liability. Praise the Lord. Yeah, that's it. The cheapest way to become a liability in life is to refuse to grow. And growth is intentional. Growth is made to happen. Growth does not just happen accidentally. That's why you can be in church for a long time and still you are who you are. Nothing has changed. And yet some people came three months ago, six months ago, five months ago, and they are showing fruit of godly character. Why? Because they are yielding and opening themselves up to the word of God. Are you here with me? The Bible says, for your ways are not my ways. Neither are my thoughts like your thoughts. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Praise the Lord. Okay. So, Third John 1, 2. Third John 1, 2. Be, be, beloved, I wish above all things. Somebody say, I wish above all things. That thou mayest prosper and be in health even as your soul prospereth. Somebody say, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospered. How many of you believe that God's will is for you to be in health? God is not happy when you are sick. How many of you also believe and you are convicted and you are persuaded that God is not happy when you don't have money? You believe it? It looks like my job may be easy. <laughs> but your conviction must be strong in it. Praise the Lord. You see, under the New Testament, everything is by faith. Somebody say everything is by faith. Everything. Yeah. everything is by faith. There is nothing you are going to receive from God that you will not receive it by faith. There is nothing. Nothing. Salvation came to you through faith. Every other thing that comes as a result of salvation would also be received through faith, including financial prosperity. Praise the Lord. And that's why you cannot just 
operate like the way unbelievers believe you re, uh, operate. You can't relate to money the way unbelievers relate with money. And most of the time, when Christians are talking, and sometimes some ignorant people are talking, they just talk and talk and talk. And this person doesn't do this and he's prosperous. And this person doesn't do this and he's prosperous. You see, and it's simply because we don't even understand what prosperity is as far as Christians are concerned. Praise the Lord. Yeah. And that's why I said I'm going to take my time to walk you through it because you have to understand prosperity in the light of the New Testament. When the Bible says a Christian is a prosperous one or is rich, how does he determine or define his wealth? Because I know that in the natural, when we say somebody is rich, you already know who, how the person is. What are some of the pictures that come to your mind? A very nice house. A Mercedes Benz. Yes? Cash in bank. Talk back to me. You don't, you don't know. I think now you can pretend now. Now you are, I'm seeing that you are really pretending. Because even in your own mind, you have an idea. When you become rich, you have an idea who you will be. Yeah. If you say you are rich or you are blessed, you have an idea what you are referring to. But when God says you are blessed, what does he mean? When God says you are blessed, it simply means you are a blessing. Praise the Lord. That's the simplest definition of God's blessing. When God blesses a man, he is a blessing. He is a blessing. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 17 with me. 1 Timothy. Apostle Paul had time to address this subject very well because a lot, there were a lot of misconceptions around the thing. Because, I mean, when we talk about prosperity, people think that uh, everybody's going to be a millionaire. No, everybody's not going to be a millionaire. Because the principles and how, what it takes to become a millionaire, not everybody can engage that. But you see, everybody can have enough to advance the cause of Christ. Praise the Lord. That's the God's will. God's will is that. No, let, let's, let's do that before we come here. Okay. Now, look, 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 let's stay here. He said, charge them that are rich in this world. Now, he is simply saying that not everybody will be rich in this world. But everybody can be rich in the kingdom. Charge them that are rich in this world. Tell them that are rich in this way. That they be no high-minded, no trust. So when God sees that you are rich, this is his. Don't, don't be high-minded because that is a natural part of it. Most of the people who have worldly riches are very arrogant. They don't have respect for people. They don't talk to people well. They, they behave as if they know it all. And their confidence is in money. Take money away from them and their blood pressure goes up. Let their business suffer a defeat and there's a heart palpitation. Something is happening to them. Am I communicating here? He said, No trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God, who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. Now look at verse 18. This is how rich Christians behave, that they do good. Praise the Lord. When we say you are rich, this is how God measures riches. And we have to understand this. By this standard, a lot of you who are even earning more are very poor, according to God. Praise the Lord. Yeah. A lot of you who have capacity or have a lot of money, you are, you are already poor. He said that they, do, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate. Give me the New Living Translation. Ready to distribute, willing to communicate. I want to be rich, I want to be rich. What is the motivation? You see, a certain prosperity message was brought to us from the very foundation. And that message was pushed to the point until every Christian became greedy. So we have raised a generation of believers who are greedy for money. All they want is money. It's not that they want money for any kingdom purposes. They just want money. And they become lovers of money more than lovers of God. Praise the Lord. Are you hearing me? No. Until you get this straightened up. You have money, but money will never be useful and a blessing in your life. Praise the Lord. One of the things that makes money powerful is that money can send things ahead of you in heaven. Money can push things ahead of you. What Paul was speaking, he said, we brought nothing into this world. And it is certain we can carry nothing out. I checked and I realized that uh, we can carry something out. 
And what we can carry it out, we can carry it through our money. Praise the Lord. You can carry some things with you through your money. There are things that you can carry. The house you build here, you can't carry out. So for certain, you can. Your cars, no matter how many they are, you can't carry them out. But the investment you make in the kingdom with your money, you can carry them out. So blessed are those who die in the Lord that they may rest from their labor. And their works follow them. I'm not communicating here. Their works follow them. Their works follow them. Their works follow them. Their works follow them. Listen, you have heard quite a lot about money and prosperity. But I want you to take what I'm going to be teaching you very seriously. Praise the Lord. Very seriously. Very seriously. Because it will make a difference between your now and your future. And it will make a difference between your now, your life on earth, and your life in all of eternity. Praise the Lord. Very, very critical. That's what he said. Teach those. That's what I'm teaching you. Teach those who are rich in this world. Not to be proud nor trust in their money. Because when you keep money and you use it, you don't use it for what God wants you to use it for. You become proud with it. He says, which is unreliable. Somebody says it's unreliable. Okay. Their trust should be in God who gives richly all we need for our enjoyment. Then he says that they do tell them to use their money to do good. They should be rich in good works, general to those in need, and share with others. Praise the Lord. Okay. Now, when we talk about financial prosperity, this is what it simply means. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. In my context, this is what it means. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. Amplify version, please. He says, and God is able to make all grace. Somebody say all grace. All grace. Every favor and earthly blessing come to you in abundance so that you may always, now, always and under all circumstances, and whatever the need be, self-sufficient, possessing enough to require no aid or support or furnish in abundance for every good work and charitable donation. Can somebody say an amen? amen. Uh -huh. So when we talk about financial prosperity, that's what we are looking at. We are talking about the grace of God coming upon you and empowering you to be sufficient. Praise the Lord. Yeah, empowering you to be able to have more than you need in order to meet the needs of others. That's what it means to be financially prosperous. Praise the Lord. And financial prosperity, the, the uh, kingdom prosperity is not limited to our finances. That's one unique feature about it. When God prospers you, he gives you the capacity to be a blessing. Well, understand that lack and want and insufficiency is never God's will for anyone. Somebody say lack and want and insufficiency is never God's will for anyone. No. If you want to know what God's will is and was, we go to the beginning. When he put Adam in the garden, there was no need. Adam had everything he needed in the garden. There was no lack whatsoever. Do you know the time Adam became naked? When you become naked, it simply is a sign that you are in need. You remember the prodigal son? He came to himself. In other words, nothing was left on him. There was nothing. Everything he had was lost. He lost everything and came to himself. Adam had himself. That was the time that Adam had gone off track with God. Praise the Lord. When Adam broke camp with God, then he became naked. His need and his wants began. When he broke relationship with God. So when God made man, we are never told Adam God, Adam went to God and said, give me today my daily bread. Because it wasn't a prayer point. It wasn't necessary. Praise the Lord. Everything he needed was available. And in Christ, everything we need is available. Somebody say an amen. amen. I said, in Christ, everything we need is available. Amen. The Bible said, God had given unto us all things that pertains to life and godliness. It's available. Somebody say it's available. You see, when you understand it's available, you will not be looking for it. You will be seeking to do what you need to do in order for it to be released into your hands. Somebody say it's available. Now, when you have money available in the bank, what do you do? You just pick your checkbook, you go to the bank, and you sign, and you cash out the money because it's available. You don't go from one house to another looking for money because you know it's available. A lot of believers don't know that money is available. 
Money is available in Christ. Somebody say money is available in Christ. Shout it. I have money in Christ. I have health in Christ. I have peace in Christ. I have prosperity in Christ. Yeah, it's available. David was speaking in Psalm 20, 37 verse 25. He said, I've been young, now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. It's available. Say, it's available. It's available. Psalm 84 verse 11. The Lord God, he's a son and he's a shield. He will give grace, he will give glory. And no good thing would he withhold from them that walk upright. Somebody say, it's available. It's available. Say, it's available. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 to 11, Jesus said, Ask and it shall be given, seek and it shall find, knock and it shall be opened unto you. Then he says, For everyone that asketh, receiveth, and to him that seeketh, he findeth, and to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Verse 9, he says, For verse 9, and what is what, what man is there of you whom if his son asks bread will give him a stone? Verse 10, he says, And if he asks for a fish, will give him a serpent for a fish. Now, I like this verse 11. He said, if you being evil, if you then being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more shall your heavenly father give good things to those that ask him? Is money one of those good things? And that's why I see God prosper you. I see God bless you. I see God release funds into your hands. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. You see? God is looking for those he can trust to entrust riches to. That's what God is looking for. Those he can trust. Those he can trust. There are some people now, if God gave them more money, they'll have multiple wives. There are some people, if God gave them more money, they will not be in church. Praise the Lord. And that is why God will always prepare you for prepared blessings. God will always prepare you. Before he brings you into the, 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 the palace of Pharaoh and make you the prime minister, he has worked on your heart to let go and to use power to profit people and not to punish people. God will always prepare you. Sometimes we yearn for things, we pray for things, we cry for things. And the question we really need to ask is, am I prepared for what I'm asking for? Praise the Lord. Because everything that God gives you has a responsibility. And everything God gives you, you will account for it. In fact, when the Bible talks about the fact that we shall give account, in most of the references in the New Testament, it refers to money. Praise the Lord. Yeah, it refers to money. That is not the only. But principally, we shall give account of whatever God has given us. He refers largely to money. It's not the only uh, interpretation. The Bible said, if they obey and serve him, they shall spend their days in what? Prosperity and their years in pleasure. Look at Psalm 35, verse 27 with me. This is God's mind. Somebody say, this is God's mind. Is God's mind. Now, and I want us to know that Every good man, every good woman, every good parent want the best from it for their children. No, so that's that's what Jesus told us. He said, "Which of you being evil know how to? If you being evil know how to give good gift to your children, how much more? Now, if earthly human wicked fathers would want the best for their children, God wants much more for us. Let's look at it. Let them shout for joy and." And who favor my, oh, let's read it. Who favor my, and let them say continually, the Lord be magnified. Who delights in the prosperity? Somebody say, God delights in my prosperity. Say, God delights in my prosperity. God is happy when I'm prosperous. God is happy when I do well financially. Praise the Lord. It's important that we appreciate that. And it should be in your subconscious. God wants you to do well. It was Martin Luther who said, Any religion that claims to be concerned about people without addressing the economic conditions that strangle them is a dry and a useless religion. Praise the Lord. Any religion that claims to be concerned about people without addressing the economic 
condition that strangled them is a dry and useless religion. How many of you know that our religion is not a useless one? This one is not. Praise the Lord. Our, our relationship with God nourishes our soul. But beyond our soul, it affects our body. God has a lot to say about our body in scripture. Not just your spirit. Your spirit is saved. Your, your mind and your soul must come in alignment. But your body matters to God. Praise the Lord. And that's what we need to understand. Two reasons why it's important that we appreciate God's way concerning our finances. Because one, it helps to activate your faith. It will activate your faith to receive your heritage of abundance in Christ. Somebody say, I have abundance in Christ. Say it, I have abundance in Christ. The Bible said the thief comes only except to see, to kill, and to destroy. I came that you might have. I came that you have. Satan came to steal. Jesus came so we will have. May you have more. Amen. I said may you have more. Amen. John chapter 10 verse 10. The Bible said the thief comes only. Give me the amplified version. John 10 10. The thief comes only. The thief comes only in order to steal, kill, and destroy. I came that they might have and enjoy. Somebody say have and enjoy. Have say have and enjoy. Have. They might have and enjoy life. Life in a, and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. Somebody say, in Christ, I'm entitled to an overflowing life. Say, in Christ, I'm entitled to an overflowing life. Okay, now you have to understand this. Once you understand this, your faith is activated. When Satan presents you lack, you don't just cross your finger and say, uh, this world is not my home. I'm only passing through. No, 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 no. By and by, when the morning comes, when the saints of God, in the sweet by and by, in the bitter now and now. Now, that's not godliness. Praise the Lord. That's not Christianity. That your faith is in Christ. That's not me. You see, that's what unbelievers want us to embrace. They want us to embrace the fact that once we have believed in God, we should not worry about money. So that they will use money to sabotage our faith. Praise the Lord. That, that's, that's why I, I started by telling that there is always an agenda. There is always an agenda. When Jesus resurrected, let me show you. When Jesus resurrected from the dead. Do you know what silenced the news of his resurrection? Till day, till tomorrow, the Jews don't believe that Jesus resurrected. That's why a lot of people in Israel are not born again. And the reason why they are not born again is because money has changed hands. Praise the Lord. Somebody paid that that news should never go out. And let me tell you, in our times, a lot of us are praying. You see, when we don't release our faith for finances, we will pray about things we shouldn't pray about. What is going on with the gating very soon? Sooner or later, you will see government in Africa bowing to it. Uganda president issued a fiato and signed it into, it is one of the finest gay laws. Praise the Lord. So they say it's a, it's a, a genetics, it's, it's a, <laughs> they say it's, a, it's, it's, it's something that is part of you or something. But I tell you, if you are in Uganda and you see that law, the thing will leave you. <laughs> it must leave you. <laughs> the, law, the law is sharp enough. And I pray that God, Ghana, God, Ghana government will be tough and will be strong enough to be able to make this. Praise the law. Yeah. Yeah. And when the church is influential and we are very powerful, we can tell the government, listen, go this way or we sack you. Praise the Lord. Yeah, go this way or we sack you. But when we lack power, that's what the Bible said, the voice of a poor man is not heard. And most of the time, all Satan wants the church to do, the church, Satan doesn't want the church, he doesn't care if the church is powerful. As long as the church is poor, he doesn't mind. Praise the Lord. Because there's very little you can do with a poor church. There's a very little you can do with a poor Christian. There is so much a godly and a generous Christian can do for the kingdom of God. 
Am I communicating here? That's why I want to provoke your faith to go for what God has for you because it is yours in Christ. Am I communicating here? It's your heritage in Christ. Don't hate money. That's why I wrote a book about the truth about money. And I'll come and teach about it sometime to come. But now, I just want to build you up from the fundamentals. A believer takes what God has said, embraces it, and allows it to form his mentality. That's who a believer is. You are a believer because of the way you think. Because as a man thinker in his heart, so is he. So, when you meet a Christian, his thinking will show it. When you meet a non-believer, his thinking will show it. And your thinking is shaped by what you have been, what, what you have heard, what you have embraced, and what you have allowed to be, become your mentality. Number two, we need to know God's will concerning our finances so we are not taken advantage of by the devil. Satan won't take advantage of you. I said, Satan will not take advantage of you. He will not cheat you of your inheritance. The Bible said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Now, I want to walk you through two main reasons. Today, I'll address the first five here. And next week, I'll do the first five that has to do with you. You see, everything that God tells us, it begins with him. Somebody say it begins with him. This principle is so important because when you don't understand this, you will abuse opportunities God gives you. When God gives you an opportunity, the opportunity is not first for you. It's first for him. Praise the Lord. It's first for him. Everything God gives you, if he gives you money, the first reason why he gave you the money is him. Are you with me? The first reason why he gave you. If he gave you a child, the first reason why he gave you the child is for him. The moment you allow, any time you put whatever God has given you ahead of your relationship with him, that thing becomes more important to you than God, and God begins to get problems with you. Praise the Lord. It's, it's a fundamental principle. He gave Adam a very beautiful garden. And said, Abraham, Adam, if you want to enjoy what I've given you, your allegiance must be to me and to me only. In other words, you will do what I tell you to do. And that is it. Adam chose not to go God's way. And so he ended up losing everything God had given him. I pray you won't lose what God has given you. I pray you will be able to enjoy what God has given you. Shout a believing amen. amen. The Bible says, gives us reasons why God prospers us. God's will is prosperity. Five reasons why God wants you to prosper and do well financially. Number one is because it is critical for the establishment of his covenant and the building of his church on the earth. Somebody say it's critical. Say it is critical for the establishment of his covenant and the building of his church on the earth. It's very critical for it. Establish critical for the establishment of his covenant. We are not talking about the old covenant. We are talking about the new covenant, which is dedicated to the salvation of all men. Jesus came to share this blood that everyone who believes must be saved. This is God's covenant on the earth. This is God's covenant agenda now. And this cannot be accomplished without abundance. Somebody say it cannot be accomplished without abundance. Please hear me and hear me well. When an unbeliever has money, the purpose for the money is different. When a believer has money, the purpose is different. Praise the Lord. Say the purpose is different. Say the purpose for my money is different from the purpose of an unbeliever's money. Uh -huh. Please, this understanding will help you. When people are talking chaff, you will know what to, what to answer them. He said that you may know how to give a reason to every man who asks you a reason for your faith. Why do God, why is it God's will that I prosper and I do well financially? Because number one, God has a covenant to establish. Number two, God has a church to build. Now look at this. The Bible says in Deuteronomy 18, 8, 18, Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that gives you the power to what? It is he that gives you the power to get that he may establish his covenant with you. Now listen, this was not given to everybody. This was given to Israel, the people of God. Are you here with me? Yeah, that's God's instruction. It was given to the nation of Israel. He told them, listen, I am going to give you the power to make money. And the reason for the money is because of my covenant. So you Israelites never forget it. Nehemiah chapter 2 verse 20, he said, so I answered and said to them, the God of heaven himself, Nehemiah 2.20, 
He himself will prosper us, and therefore we, his servants, will arise and build. Why will God prosper us so we arise to build? Somebody say, God prospers me, so I will arise and build. Now, look at this. You remember the children of Israel were in captivity for how many years? 430 years. They were supposed to be in captivity for 400 years, but they went 430 years. When they were ready to go out, God gave them favor. And look at this very closely. He gave them favor. And he gave them favor such that all the 430 years they work without pay, all their pay plus interest and more was given to them on that day. Praise the Lord. They were given. Now listen, these are people who are not going to take a plane. They were not going to take a flight. They were not going to need anything. If you remember, in the wilderness, they never cooked. They never bought anything. Now, if you are not going to buy, you are not going to cook, why do you need money? But God had the purpose. When God said, I'm going to give you favor, I'm going to give you money, he didn't tell them. He just told them, I'm going to give you favor and give you money. And then they went. Look at it. Chapter 3, Exodus chapter 3, chapter 3, verse 21 to 23. And I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, and it shall come to pass. When you go, you shall not go empty. May you not go empty. May you not go through life empty. May God give you favor to accumulate wealth. In the mighty name of Jesus. He said, you will not go empty. Now look at this. But every man shall borrow of a neighbor and of her that sojourned in a house jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment, and you shall put them upon your sons and upon your daughters. Gold and silver has become chains around people's neck. They use them to decorate themselves. After this time, they didn't know why they carried the money. Now look at Exodus 25, verse 1 and 2. When God gives you a certain ability, he gives you skill, he gives you intelligence, and you have gone to school, and you are earning, you started a business, and you doing well, and you are getting money. Why did God allow you to go through that process and give you the money? Understand this. Now look at Exodus 25, verse 1. Exodus 25. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, look at this, speak unto the children of Israel. Please follow this closely. The weddings are very important. He says, speak unto the children of Israel that they bring me an offering. They bring me what? They bring me what? Uh -huh. Of every man that giveth it willingly with his heart, you shall take my offering. He said, tell them to bring me offering. Where are they getting the offering from? The one I gave them. Am I communicating here? Yeah. He gave it to them by favor. Now he's demanding it. Now go to verse 8 to 9. Verse 8 to 9. He tells them what he's going to use the offering for. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. <laughs> are you here with me now? So when God gives you money, you are not just dreaming of, uh, I'm tired of this house. I think I need to build a nice house. I'm tired of this car. I think I need to change my car. That's not God's purpose. Praise the Lord. That's why a lot of believers compare themselves with unbelievers when it comes to wealth. But if you measure, that's what we will get to heaven and we'll be shocked about people God calls millionaires. People that we felt were nobodies on earth and these will be decorated as millionaires in the kingdom of God. Why? Because what, what makes you a millionaire in God's kingdom is different from what makes you a millionaire in the eyes of a world. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And until you embrace this thinking and you begin to live your life like this, you are only going through the motions. You are not a child of God. Let them make me a sanctuary. According to all that I showed them after the parting. And look at how these guys responded. Beautiful. Verse 35, verse 4 and 5. And Moses spoke unto the congregation of Israel saying, This is the thing which the Lord had commanded. Take you from among the offering. Verse 22 to 23, quickly. And they came. They came. Somebody said they came. Both men and women, as many as were willing hearted and brought bracelets and earrings and rings and tablets, all jewels of gold. And every man that offered, offered an offering of gold unto the Lord. Did you see that? Now, do you also remember when Solomon went to God to pray? How many of you remember that? What did Solomon tell God? He said, I don't need anything. Just give me wisdom. And God said, I'm going to give you money. Do you know why God gave Solomon money? Because he had an agenda for him to build in his life. 
Praise the Lord. He didn't ask for it. God gave it to him. And he used it for the building. Praise the Lord. You see, we have to be very, very careful the way we manage our money. Yeah, because our greatest disappointment when we meet God on the day of judgment will be how much he committed into your hands and what you use it for. Because for every CD, every dime, every cobalt that enters your hand, God knows it. And he knows what it is used for. Praise the Lord. Whether it's advancing the cause of Christ or is accomplishing your selfish and greed, God knows it. Praise the Lord. And if you look at the children of Israel in particular, you see, the children of Israel, they are, whatever happened to them is an example for us. We are told in the book of uh, 1 Corinthians that all of these things were written for our learning and they are examples so that we don't walk in that path. Any time God had a problem with them, it was because they had abandoned his house. In the book of Haggai, when they abandoned the house, he said, you look for much and it's not coming much. You are, you are doing everything and it's not happening because I have blown upon it because you have abandoned my house. When you come to the last book of the Bible, Malachi, he said, you are cursed. This whole nation, it's not an individual thing. Praise the Lord. You, this whole nation is under a curse. And the reason why I place a curse on you is that you have abandoned my house. Now bring everything into my house and prove me see whether I will not open the windows. In other words, what God is simply saying is that that which brings you under my perpetual blessing is your commitment and dedication to my house. When Jesus came, Matthew chapter 6, verse 83, he said the same thing in the context of my finance. You have to understand, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 is not taken out of anything. It was in the context of meeting our financial needs. Praise the Lord. Yeah, that's what it's about. Matthew 6, verse 24, he said, no one can serve two masters. You will either serve God or mama. Give me Matthew 6, 25. Let's read it. No one can serve two masters. You either serve God or mama. 24. No one can serve two masters. You either love one and hate the other or you will hold on to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mama. Now go to 25. Then he began to talk about it. He says, therefore take no thought for your life. What you eat, what you will drink, or yet for your body, what you will wear, is not the life more than meat. All of these things, is not your life, what you wear is all money. Praise the Lord. It's all money. And that's what scripture was talking about there. Money, 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 money. And then when you go to verse 32, he tells you God's mind about it. <laughs> he says, after all these things, the Gentiles are seeking. He's telling you what unbelievers are looking for. And those are the same things you are also worried about. All these things, unbelievers are looking for them. And these things, the Gentiles are seeking. For your heavenly father knows you have need of them. That's what I will talk about next week. God knows you need money. Praise the Lord. God knows you need money. And that's one of the reasons why. He said, your heavenly father knows that you have need of these things. So, God is not blinded to the fact that you need a house, you need a car, you need all of those things. But his condition still remains. <laughs> can, can somebody understand what I'm saying? He said his condition is still the same. I know you need a house. I know you need a car. I know you need a, a wife. I know you need this. I know you need this. I know you need a shoe. I know you need all of this. But seek ye first, verse 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things, the, these things there is not anything. All the things you need shall be added unto you. Praise the Lord. Yeah. That is living your life with the kingdom of God in view. That's the first one. Number two is the fulfillment of the great commission demands it. Somebody say the fulfillment of the great commission. Say the fulfillment of the great commission. Yeah. How else can we take the gospel to the nations of the world? Jesus said, go unto all the world. And preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Go ye into all the world. How do you go into all the world? Acts chapter 1 verse 8. He says, Ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses. This gospel of the kingdom. Matthew 24 verse 14. This gospel of the kingdom shall be preached unto all nations for a witness. Then the end will come. Then when you come to the book 
of Romans chapter 10 verse 13, he said, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Then he tells us, this is where money comes in. Verse 13, 14, he says, But how shall they call on him in whom they have not heard? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not believed? How shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they be sent? Verse 15. And how shall they preach except they be sent? Except they be what? How do we send? We send with money. Praise the Lord. We send. Today is Air Force Day. We send. We are on radio with money. We are not on radio with tongues. Praise the Lord. We are not on radio with music. We are on radio with money. So that is the third reason. Second, number four, number three, because our influence and impact are sought and light in the world will be limited or ignored without prosperity. Somebody say, my impact and my influence. You know, you see, being a child of God is to be an influential person. Somebody say, I'm an influential person. Yeah, you are an influential person. You are, not, you are not, you are an influential person. The Bible says you are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. All that, that means is that you are born to be a person of influence. You are supposed to be relevant. But how else will you be relevant without money? Without money, you can't demonstrate relevance. We have a mandate of global relevance. But that cannot be a reality in poverty. Praise the Lord. It takes money. The Bible talks about the, the fact that the wisdom of a wise man is despised. And his words are not heard. I'm looking at why God wants you to be financially prosperous. And I'm looking at his kingdom area. Praise the Lord. Next week, I will look at what has to do with you. Because that is how we, we flow. Unfortunately, that is the realm a lot of people are living. But this is where it starts from. When God gives you money, the first thing that must be on your mind are these things. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That is what it takes to be a person of influence. The Bible said the rich, wealth maketh many friends. Wealth maketh what? Many friends. But the poor is hated of his neighbor. Wealth maketh many friends. Money brings influence. May you command influence. Amen. Number four, the voice and the light of the gospel will be silent and extinguished without prosperity. Somebody say the voice. Say the voice. the voice. The voice and the light of the gospel will be silenced and extinguished without prosperity. There will be no voice. The good news is the gospel. Do you know the good news is the gospel? Do you know that with money we can change what goes on all radio stations in Kumasi? Am I communicating here? With money. With money. With money. The whole city will be influenced. What goes on in TV? Look. Sometimes when you see some, the time some gospel programs take place on TV, I don't know whether it's a ghost who watches it. It's money. Do you know why it is there? Prime time. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't do prime time. Prime time. <laughs> the time that human beings will watch and be born again. Your money cannot take you there. So what is stopping the gospel? It is not prayer. It is money. Am I communicating here? What is silencing the gospel is money. And, and you see, that's why Satan would want people to come against the church. And we speak against the church. And we say, all oh, manner. When we talk about holiness, the, all believers are okay. When we talk about work ethics, they are okay. When we talk about marriage, they are okay. Even now, that one too, they are not okay because of gay. Now, now, but when we talk about money, they are angry. Because listen, it did not start now. When Jesus resurrected, they used money to silence the news. And after he has resurrected and gone to heaven, and he's seated at the right hand, and the church is supposed to be marching forward, Satan still is using the tool of money and poverty to fight the church. Am I communicating here? That's why you cannot embrace poverty mentality as a Christian. Praise the Lord. You are doing a great disservice to God and his kingdom when you accept poverty as okay, I'm okay. For me, I don't need money. You don't need money. I need it to take the gospel. Am I communicating here? We need money. And God wants you to be blessed and prosperous. And I'm, listen, these are fundamentals. If you don't get this, there is no way God can commit much into your hands. 
say dominion. Now, money empowers you for dominion. The Bible says, the rich ruled over the poor, and the borrower is a servant to the lender. Somebody said, the rich rules over the poor. Listen, if you borrow somebody's money, he will determine when he will sleep. Oh. He will determine. He will determine. <laughs> Praise the Lord. He will come there. He knows that early in the morning, 4 a.m., you have left. And as a rich man, he will wake up that early. <laughs> but he can drive in the cool of the night. While you are sleeping, he knocks on you. <laughs> I am here. The rich, somebody say the rich. Rules over the poor. The borrower is a servant to the lender. Listen, if anybody tells you that salvation is the most important thing, tell the person, yes, I agree. But salvation will not deliver much without money. That's why when Jesus came, he received wisdom and he received riches. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? The Bible said he has made us unto God kings and priests. Somebody say kings and priests. Say kings and priests. That's Revelation 5.10. Kings and priests. And as a king, you need money to rule. All kings are not the same. All chiefs are not the same. And there are differences in their money. Praise the Lord. Am I communicating here? How many chiefs from Ghana went to Prince Charles? <laughs> Let me leave that one. Praise the Lord. The Bible says we have been ordained for dominion. Listen, God created us, number one, for dominion, and number two, he redeemed us for dominion. God never wants you to feel dominated. You know, when you don't have money, you feel dominated. You are not yourself. You can look sick when you are not sick. Money gives you dominion. Money gives you authority. Am I communicating here? You are coming home and you, you are, your, your self-confidence is gone. You are 25, you are looking like 50. Because poverty is on you. You shall not be poor. Yeah. I said you will not be poor. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Now listen, this is the biblical mentality behind prosperity. When they say that we should not talk about money, what they want you to do is that they want to dominate you. They want to keep you enslaved. They don't want you to have a voice. They don't want you to have expression. They don't want you to become a person of authority. And yet God has already made you a person of authority. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given unto you. Including financial authority. You will enjoy wealth. You will walk in prosperity. In the mighty name of Jesus. Shout God's will. It's my financial prosperity. God wants me to be have money. God wants me to have money. He doesn't want money to have me. Praise the Lord. Stand on your feet. Praise the Lord. This is why it's important. There is a conspiracy. I watch uh, Ms. Oveni's uh, speech. And I have also watched the replies from uh, Washington and other places. Praise the Lord. Even last night, because I know I was going to preach this, I was watching it. They will cut this aid, they will cut that aid, they will cut that aid, they will cut that aid. Imagine what it will be if after they have cut all that aid, the church is so prosperous, the church in Uganda is so prosperous, and they tell government, government, don't go back on what you have made. We will finance all government projects. Nothing will stop. Now, imagine the difference it will make. Am I complicating it? Let's sit in Ghana and be praying against gay, against this. No, 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 no. The people are paying, and when they finish paying, sooner or later, somebody must bow. Am I complicating it? Somebody must bow. This is Satan's agenda. That's why Satan wants everybody else to get money. The only place Satan doesn't, the only person and the only group of people on the earth Satan don't want them to have money is the church. Christians. Christians, they are the only people Satan wants to keep poor. And so God's method of prospering us, Satan will dilute it. He will not let us release our faith. He will not let us hear what we need to hear. 
So you corrupt what we hear. Praise the Lord. Somebody said the message of prosperity is part of the gospel. You, you, you can't preach the gospel without prosperity. When you say good news, what is good news to the poor? Your needs are met. Is that not it? That's good news to the poor. If you are poor, your needs are met. Your needs are met. Listen. If we pray and pray and pray and pray, and we are broke and broke and broke, they will still be sending us every day. Praise the Lord. They will send you every day. It will not matter. But your life will matter. Your life will be impactful. In the mighty name of Jesus. Say this after me. We are going through the five things I talked about. So you can project them from the first one. Say God's will. God's will is my prosperity. Is my prosperity. Because he seeks to establish his covenant and build his church through me. Number two, God's will is my prosperity because the fulfillment of the great commission demands it. Number three, God's will is my prosperity because my influence and impact in life is connected to it. Number four, God's will is my prosperity because the voice and the light of the gospel will be silenced and extinguished without prosperity. Number five, God's will is my prosperity because prosperity empowers me for dominion and relevance on earth. Lift up your hands and receive grace to command wealth. Receive grace. Grace. You are the one who makes my life so beautiful. I can't stop singing because you turn my life around. Open your mouth and pray. You are the one who makes my life so beautiful. Stop singing cause you made my world around You are the one who make my life so beautiful I can stop singing cause you turn my life around You are the one who make my life so colorful I can stop singing cause you made A heart for the kingdom, 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 a heart for the kingdom. Thank you, Spirit of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we yield our heart to you. We yield our heart to you. Let the things that move you move our hearts. Let the things that mean more to you mean much to us. Thank you, Father, that we receive the power to get wealth to establish your kingdom. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' precious name. Amen.